gems I are dropping. I the, I I'm glad just threw that out there because I know that's how you, gems are dropping. So what's up? Yep. We're in the live. Derek Griffin, DG Sex, yep. Peter Hostos, Disrupt Education. How you doing, Derek? Man, I'm I'm doing great, man. If, if there's one word I could describe, I guess how I've been feeling lately is abundance. That's one word I've been leading with lately. Abundance is is on the way. It's here, uh, but it's it's continuously happening around me, and that's what I've been attracting. So I'm very happy about that. Um, just in a good mindset about you know the things I'm working on, the things I'm growing towards, and music as always, man. It's it's moving me forward in ways I never thought. So I'm feeling a little underdressed today. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh man, man, I can explain, man. Shout out to Till and Tech, Lloyd Yates, uh, class of 2015. We're representing over here, man. Anytime I can get a chance to wear this tie and support, I, I'll do it. So uh, yeah, yeah, he's got some great yeah. things. We'll tag him in this. Um, for sure, for sure. Uh, yeah, just a killer yeah. of a uh, come such a long way. I remember him in entrepreneurship and small business management, um, and now the things he's doing. So uh, yeah. check him out. I'll throw him down here in the comments. Um, for sure. All right. So I actually, I know he uses AI a little bit um, when he's yeah. uh, talking about his apparel. Um, yeah. You sent me something today uh, in talking about AI and HR. So what I wanted to do is talk about like yeah. some of the possibilities of AI in the music industry and the entertainment industry when you're doing gigs, right? Specifically yeah. what you do. Uh, on that realm um you know yeah. first and foremost just kind of putting it out there i think everybody's like yeah i've heard songs like redone and you go to youtube and those types of things i'm right. not really talking about that um because there might be some copyright issues and things like that i'm sure. talking about like the processes of like helping people figure out and or the entertainer entertainer help um kind of put together the best opportunity of an engaging entertaining musical experience for a client so i'm just gonna yeah, drop man. that in your lap man that's a lot yeah no no i think you can take no it. this is this is good I, I got it man i'm, I'm gonna drop some gems I, I think i think like when it comes to ai right obviously everybody is uh you know somewhat on guard about it when it comes to how it can be utilized and and i think in, in many ways it can be utilized to your benefit uh and, and not over take the personal experience that you have, whether it's in music, education, right? Um, you know, you can either decide to use something or abuse it. But I think in this case, like even with AI and music, um, there's some unique ways in the event space that it could be used. One, I, I think when you look at, um, there's an app that I came across recently, it's called Vibo, and they help with event planning. So once you are, you know, enlisted as the groom and bride, or it's a corporate event, you can then from, you know, opening song to ending song, like basically curate how you want the event to go, what you want in your playlist. And I think if AI is integrated in that, it can definitely can help you suggest like what type of songs uh, based on your interests, right? If you're into hip hop or what's the top five Neo Soul on Billboard right now, or hey, curate a, curate a playlist from the summer of 2011, right? Like anything that was hot in 2011 can be curated. And I think it's a really quick way for people to generate ideas and also generate moments like big memories and big moments uh, is something that I know uh, my buddy DJ Daly over at uh, the DJ firm always talks about. And I think it's really key to having those uh, those moments be created, right, and, and create special um, occasions for, right? So I think with AI, uh, it's leveraging, like, your playlist, uh, being able to cater to everyone that's in the room, right? When we talk about different events uh, that promote diversity, inclusion, um, I think it's really key to make sure that you're, that you're touching on all different cultures and being able to, you know, have that be a way to read the room as well. You know, uh, when you have keynote speakers and, uh, you know, people from different countries, when you're working on, on a global level, uh, showing how you can uh, create attractiveness from all different angles. Um, the other way I could see AI, you know, kind of coming into play is just the automation of of being able to book something, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can anticipate like certain questions, you know, a, a very common question that I tend to get is like, Hey, have you ever worked with a DJ before? If so, what does that look like? Right. So like kind of, um, being able to anticipate those frequently asked questions, if you can, you know, essentially program that or automate that into machine learning, uh, that can make a lot of your processes a lot more efficient. I think on the back end, uh, without necessarily taking away, 
from being able to speak with me, DG Sachs, directly, right? Because I think it's important to have that personalized element where if someone wants to get on a phone call, let's do it, you know? And that five-minute phone call could be the difference between someone wanting to book you or, you know, seeing that you don't have necessarily the value or maybe we just don't align, you know? And that's the one thing I always tell creators too, like, don't force the fit. Like, if it doesn't fit, like, you know, find something that fits you better, um, you know, or just find someone that you can, you can recommend, right? Like find ways to, to add value in other ways that way too. Um, but I think ultimately with AI, there, there's a level of uh, personalization, hyper personalization that you can create. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I've noticed about these events. The, the reality is like, you know, you could be the most talented person in the world, but like how you can cater it to that person or that individual. Uh, you know, I won't mention names right now, but working with a really big client and, you know, the thing that they're looking for is an acoustic element to their performance. Mm -hmm. And so me coming from a musicianship standpoint, I shared my perspective. I said, Hey, if we go with a backing track here, I think the performance will definitely be more impactful. But the reality is like the client wants something that's more acoustic. And if I can help, bring out that performance in that manner, then I'm all for that. And I think obviously as a creator, you have to ask yourself or a musician, you know, can I bring that versatility to that performance? Am I going to be comfortable in that space? So um, allowing AI to be a tool that you can leverage, but not necessarily like take over who you are as mm -hmm. a creator or to take away from the personalized you know, experience that you can have. I can uh, see it also like during events, right? Like how people yeah. interact um, you know, it's a more like, like, a uh, if you think about like a thumbs up, thumbs down, like on a Pandora sure. or something like that. Right. So sure. to kind of, to pull together, you know, what people are listening to, um, yeah. you, uh, obviously, um, when you're booking people already kind of have an automated process, a guy named yeah. Dan Bevan. Um, That's right. That's right. so can you, can you explain a little bit about that? Like kind of, there are some automations to it, but like if somebody would like say coming after, yo, I want DG Sachs, what, what would they do? Yeah. So like for me personally, like I, you know, we tested it out for a brief period of time where, mm -hmm. you know, if someone DMs the word Sachs to my Instagram, then it would auto populate like a message saying, hi, my name is Derek DG Sachs. Thank you for reaching out. We'd love to learn more about your event. And mm -hmm. it would go through like a brief questionnaire, which worked for a short period of time. But I mm -hmm. feel like there was some gaps that were missed in, in the opportunity in the chain of command as far mm -hmm. as the message. So like for me personally, I, I still thrive off of like responding directly to those messages sure. because then like, <laughs> I, I may be able to either short circuit something or mm -hmm. just get straight to the to the chase of like what they're looking for. Um, most of the time, what's great is like, you know, it is a lot of referral based things that I get. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to then pass that on to, to Daniel, um, whereas maybe it's like a website inquiry. Right. Because there's different channels that I do receive inquiries from. If it's coming from my website, um, Daniel pretty much has like a pre templated email that can be catered to anyone universal universal so like if it's a it's if it's a wedding uh, if it's a cocktail hour if it's a corporate event we essentially have a templated format of like hey this is your date and time of event let us know how how long you want dg to be there right from there if you or if you would like to get on the phone we can discuss this in in the next five minutes mm -hmm. and just map out all the details you know and it's really it's really a, a preference i think it's important to offer bo both options you know you were just mentioning uh before we got on the live just like you know talking to comcast about cutting the bill and it's mm -hmm. like is the phone call easier or is like can <laughs> i just go into the store and talk to someone easier right and it's just you know and i think it's a preference thing and like mm -hmm. i think it's important that if businesses can cater to both sides that you're providing that versatility that you're not just one dimensional uh you want to be able to, to offer different ways of, of, of communication which i think is super important to to building a, a solid business as well mm -hmm. excellent excellent answer um love it man yeah Look, regardless if you want <laughs> an amazing entertainer around music in yes, any sir. event dgsax.com You'll talk to this guy. Trust me, he'll, he'll reach out, right? So just oh, say something right sure. here on the live. So, hey, man, whatever uh, you need, man, I got you. 
Thanks again, Derek, for uh, sharing your your expertise. Um, again, maybe tomorrow I'll put a suit on or something. Like that. I don't know, man. I'll, I'll try that. So, <laughs> but anyway, oh, guys, uh, hook up with us right here on LinkedIn. Uh, if you're on the YouTube channel, hit up uh, dgsax.com. Uh, I'm Peter Hosser, DisruptEducation.co. Hey, guys, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next time. See you.